we meet your praise. Amen. Amen. Um, and I have um, decided to talk about the joy of serving God. Amen. There's a joy, amazing joy, when we serve others, when we uh, serve God and we listen to his call. Um, how many times God has called us to do something and we just neglect it? We just ignore that. We just close our ears because it's hard sometimes or it's challenge for us. And it involves a lot from us. And it also involves from things that we have, that we have to give out. So sometimes we just ignore that voice. And we are refusing to have that joy. We are just blocking ourselves to, to not receive that power from heaven, that joy from heaven that we could find serving others. I would like to start defining the word joy. Um, because sometimes we relate joy with happiness, right? Or we see it as a light thing, just very happy and smiling and things like that. No, but the word joy, it means more than that. It's a deeper meaning. So I went to the dictionary and just got a general um, meaning of the word joy. It means intense and especially, listen to this, ecstatic or exultant happiness. Wow, joy, it means something that will stay, right? It is constant. It's a deep feeling or condition, a deep feeling or condition of, happy, of happiness or contentment. And I would say when it's involved with <coughs> the joy of serving God, it become a principle to us. It becomes something that won't change. Um, joy is a source of happiness. It's, it's a source of happiness. It's the source of happiness. It's where the happiness comes from. So it goes more than the word happiness. Um, but joy also is to be content with something that could happen to us um, is a delight, is a pleasure. Another synonym of this word is rejoice, joyful, be glad. Yeah. Um, and also I went to the dictionary and found uh, the meaning of serve or serving. And the general meaning says, perform duties or service for another person. In other words, give out. To be willing to give it all. Now, what does it mean to serve God? To give out what to him. Let's go to Romans 6, 13, to see what it means to serve God. What we should give to God. Romans 6, 13, says, I am reading from the international version, so it may be different from your Bible. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God and offer it as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. So what we should be giving to God? everything, ourselves. Um, <coughs> we can find joy when we give it all to God. Every part of our life, we must give it to God, to serve Him, to be an instrument of righteousness, not to use our body, our mind, 
<coughs> and we sing. That is the ideal of God for us. And when you do that, you're pleased. You, you find that joy. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, verse 1. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. And it says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything that we do should be for the glory of God. The joy of serving God is to be content with anything that God asks us to do. So, are you happy sometimes, or you have that joy in your heart when God is asking you something very? weird for you or very unusual, like unusual that you are not used to. Can we find joy in that? Well, God help us in the process to understand and to find that joy. Um, sometimes we can find ourselves not content with what he wants, right? Like we are rejecting. Oh no, Lord, I don't want to do this. Why are you asking me to do this? I can't do it. And then we find ourselves that we don't have power. We don't have anything. Unless God comes to us and really is here in our hearts, we can move and do what he wants us to do. Because sometimes we feel uncomfortable. <laughs> But when you know God, you know his love. You know his desire for you to be well, to have victory. And then you will be. And it's start feeling that joy, contentment, be doing what he wants you to do. That is a very important thing. When you are doing God's will, and when you are serving truly, God, you feel a major peace. You feel secure. That joy is based on faith. Because when you are facing a trial, you may be not happy, but you can be content. Like you could be facing a trial, a very difficult moment, and you won't be like, ah, I rejoice. <laughs> you won't be with that expression, but inside, you are in peace. You have the faith that at the very end, he has the victory. So you can be content by faith because you are waiting on God's victory. And that was one of the, uh, the major, uh, how I can say, one of the things that every um, apostle, every person that is mentioned on the Bible that were faithful to God and they attend the call from God, they had that faith, even they didn't see the results. They were waiting for that victory. They had that in mind, and God helped them to keep that contentment, to keep that uh, faith. So we must experience that. God wants us to experience that. When you have that kind of faith, is when you decide to serve, no matter what the cost is. You decide to serve God. Because the joy, the joy of serving God is salvation, is freedom, is eternal life. Let's go to Romans 7, 18. that is in my sinful nature. 
for I have desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry out, for what I do is not the good I want to do, not the evil I do not want to do. These I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I would do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So we see a battle that he was having here. You know, he wanted to do um, in his sinful nature, sinful nature um, but we must submit to that, and he did. Uh, let's keep reading until the verse 23. It says, so I found, I am in verse 23, so I found this law at work when I want to do good evil is right there with me for in my inner being I delight in that law but I see another law at work in the members of my body waging war against the law of my, my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members so it's the same battle that we struggle that we have every day um, God is trying to call us to do something and we are just, you know, fighting, fighting. I should do this, I am not sure. And the way to know, one of the ways to know God's will is to be in constant prayer with him, to listen his voice. Um, there is joy, joy through suffering. Do you know that? There is joy, joy. And sometimes we don't want to go through suffering because it costs a lot. You know, it costs a lot, but it will from where you get the greatest victory when you go through suffering. And it sounds like uh, how you will be happy when you are just going through such bad moments in your life. When we are trying to serve God, we all our hearts is going to be easy. No. You will start seeing a lot of wars. Things that will block the way to avoid you to serve God. And we need to be aware of that. We need to ask for wisdom for uh, to see clearly um, what will be next. Because when you hear the call and you want to do it with all your heart, the battle is coming. You will have a lot of edges. You will have people telling you, no, don't do this. You will have uh, many things that you could imagine. And I am sure many of you have gone through it, some, some things like that. We find on the Bible so many examples of people that serve God and die for Him. They went through a lot. If you are facing trials because you want to serve God, be content. God is going to give you the victory. Paul was a great example of joy serving God. He got to know Jesus in a very particular way. We remember the story of Paul, right? Yeah. He, he was blind for three days, right? Look how he had to, to be in this experience that... Um, but God wanted to give him new spiritual eyes. And I am sure God wants us to have that experience as well. Maybe not physically be blind, but be blind with all the distractions and wrong things that are around us to be able to really see what he wants us to see. And to prepare also God gave Paul this experience to prepare him to what? To serve with all his heart. How many of us need such a shame or impact like that? Are you waiting for that? <laughs> to get a ball fell down from the horse or something happened to you or an accident to wake up? No, we are right here, and I think, I believe, that is coming right now. Those beautiful examples on the Bible were written down as a testimony to us today. Paul rejoiced in God 
He truly knew what mean the joy of serving. Let's go to Romans 5, 1 to 5. Romans 5, 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we know is now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. If you notice, if we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, it's about faith. And we have a sinful nature that we want things immediately, that we want to see, you know, um, whatever we are going to do for God, we are expecting to see the blessings right away. We are expecting to see the amazing glory or whatever <coughs> things come to be, and we don't have the patience to wait. And we are not able then to feel that peace. And we are not able to feel that faith. And God wants us to experience that, that joy in the process of serving Him. Not necessarily you need to see the results. You just do what he wants you to do, and you wait and let him the results. And let's continue reading. Uh, I stop at verse 10. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character hope and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured, poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Wow, what, what a promise right here that we see. When we are trying to serve God with all our hearts, it's not going to be easy. And we need to be aware of that. Joy, it means also, according to the Bible, peace, justification by faith, rejoicing in our Savior. We have a Savior, we have an attorney that will defend us. So why we are so afraid? And uh, last night I was talking about that we, we are so afraid to do what God want us to do. We want to be uh, safe, right? So for the reason, and depending, you know, how is the environment where we live or whatever, we don't want to go out and do things because we are afraid that we will be hurt or something will happen to us. That we are not thinking about people are dying outside. We can keep sitting here every Sabbath and just forget about who is outside, waiting for someone to come to them to pray and listen to me. And I know that God will be pleased when we will decide to walk out and do His work. And I thank God because I think this church has uh, embraced that hope. And let me tell you, it has, it has been challenged because it has been raining all week. And, you know, we were thinking, oh, we need to cancel these. And, you know, it was raining really hard. But faith is what we can see. And we were waiting for a sunshine, you know, day. And look how beautiful day we have. But still, the test is there. So we still need to keep praying. Because it may rain at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock and God is testing us and maybe we give up. No, and I encourage you not to do not give up. We need to wait to the very last minute. You know, to see God's hand. We may be there and it's raining and we can wait and see. Because our work faith is in the and also be open for God's will, whatever He wants us to do. Whatever we decide the weather we're going to be, right? Yeah. So I think it's a faith 
the real building our faith. And that is so important. In the moment when we are suffering,
is coming out of the problem. Do you have the bad joy? Or you just have a kind of joy like, oh, I did it. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, the glory is for me. No. The kind of joy that God wants us to have is his joy. Mm -hmm. Not to give ourselves the glory. So we must feel that joy when we help someone. Also in Jesus, there was tremendous joy when he raised up the dead like Lazarus and those others that he brought them to life. There is joy when there is life, eternal life. There is joy in heaven when we serve God. You know that heaven is all the angels, and I can remind you that it's in, in heaven. They are praising God when we, we just listen and go and, and do what he wants us to do. The Desires of Ages, page 21, says, the angels of glory find their joy, giving love, and tireless watch care to souls that are fallen and unholy. But there is a cause, and Jesus' example is the greatest example to teach us to be a true servant. And let's go to Luke 22, 24, 27. Eternal life 
that night at the Last Supper, Jesus himself showed to the, his disciples what was the major problem. They were not understanding what it means to be a servant. And sometimes we don't understand what it means to be a servant. We want to be served, <laughs> right? We want all the privilege, and we think that we deserve it because we worked so hard. <laughs> and it's not true. Jesus was the son of God, and he left his kingdom. Oh my goodness, he, he left that amazing place where sin was not there. To be with us here, struggling like us, and, and going through a lot. The disciples made no move toward serving one another, so <laughs> Jesus waited for a time to see what they would do. Then he, the divine teacher, rose from the table, laying aside the outer garment that would have impeded his movement. He took a towel and guarded himself. With surprise, interest, the disciples looked on and in silence waited to see what was to follow. That was when they were at the Last Supper, and we found this on the side of Amos. This quote is from Ellen G. White. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel where we, he was um, guarded. This action opened the eyes of the disciples. Look how Jesus chose how to be a servant. He put himself as an example. And I could imagine the disciples, they were in shock. They were like, but why are you were doing that? We should do that for you. You shouldn't be doing that. This action opened the eyes of the disciples. Peter, shame and humiliation filled their hearts. They understood the unspoke rebuke and saw themselves in all together a new light. I hope we can follow this example today and walk into the joy of serving God. And I am going to close with an experience that I had that was was challenge to me. And I think it, it would be a blessing to share with you guys. Um, and after this experience that I will tell you, I would invite you to, to stand up or to pray, to to ask God to open your heart, to give you the true, the true meaning of serve in your heart, and stop 